Good morning, it's Tuesday 3rd of April, first day uh, of the quarter for us here in the UK. Hope everyone had a, a good Easter. I'm uh, just going to run through a couple of the, the stories from overnight. We'll have a look at the charts from today and uh, the news headlines uh, that have influenced them and then we'll have a look over the, the calendar for the rest of the week, of course, it being uh, non-farm payrolls over in the States. Just uh, going to quickly transition my chart and you can see here sea of red I mean, you've got a couple of green ones in there but yet again uh, another down day for stocks over in the US their lowest close uh, of the year not quite getting to the low point however of uh, of that sell-off we saw early February but you can see here they're definitely uh, a sea of red all over the tech sector getting a big hit again and Amazon even there minus you know five percent for the day and we'll have a quick look over the chart now as what you probably would have seen this morning, everyone talking about the S&P finally closing below its 200-day moving average, 10% off its uh, off its all-time high this year. And you know, I mean, just looking at that chart here on the on the daily candles, you can just see how unreal it looks. I mean, the size of these candles in comparison to what we've seen August through to the end of the year it really is quite something. And I mean, from a technical point of view, it's it's the first time we've, we've actually closed below that since the what was it, the 27th of June, 2016. We all know what happened uh, on that day. But from that, and if we just scroll back to, to where that was, if you just give me a second here, so I'm just going to highlight that. You can see we did come up two days later and, and then since then never looked back and then the, the next time we were briefly below the 200 day moving average was the election which uh, was only brief before we went higher and again never came back this one obviously does feel different every time it comes down you know if you would ask people uh, the bulls and if it comes down if we have a correction I'm definitely gonna buy it and then it gets down and people are like oh I don't know it does look heavy but the first time we have closed since the, the day after Brexit and we're just retesting the 200 day moving average as we speak right now so definitely one to keep an eye on in terms of where we close uh, today uh, and also the week as well so where the week closes will be quite important can we close the week below the 200 day moving average or is it again like we've seen previously an opportunity where long-term investors can actually get in and and we see this market rise higher uh, yet again so we'll come on to sort of the buy the dip uh, arguments for and against uh, just in a bit we'll have a quick look over at the Dow as well which you can see for the first time actually briefly went below that 200 day moving average so the beginning of of February where we saw the the big sell-off all over didn't quite make it down and finally breaking through Nasdaq as you can see getting closer each time and actually we just put the Nasdaq on a year we briefly yesterday went uh, negative for the year again and as you can see we're just I mean we're basically flat um, for now so even with all the, the dramas in the tech sector we're actually up for, for the year which is quite unbelievable uh, really but have a look at yesterday we'll switch over here and you can see the, the, the sell-off really did start obviously with no no one well, where the market volatility would have uh, the volume in the market sorry would have been quite a lot less uh, due to there being no UK market and you can see a breakdown here uh, really from when the cash open was it was pretty steady until then breakthrough and it's uh, you know negative hour after hour before we had a little bit of a bounce and this is really the only time where the buyers actually took over at all down there and technically and I said we'll come on to this later on but you can see not only is the 200 day moving average just above but you've got this pretty good level of resistance um, that we had last week before before breaking through same for the Dow and, and Nasdaq as you can imagine 230 and the sell-off happened Nasdaq and Dow very similar to the S&P in that respect as well as having decent resistance levels uh, just above so obviously with uh, the states open we'll have a look over at the FTSE now and it was expected to, to sort of gap down about one percent you can see yeah, there you go the Friday and the Monday obviously not showing up because of the market close and and we're just well just around that 7,000 here on the CFD for the FTSE so one to keep an eye on again any potential gap fills or if the sentiment you know increases to the downside uh, could be a while before we sort of fill that gap if you like same for the DAX have a look here gaps lower uh, due to the negative 
uh, Wall Street yesterday. In terms of, of where we could go, technically, like I said, we'll, we'll come on to that uh, a bit yesterday here. You've got the the, the, the Friday from the, from the DAX trending higher quite nicely, only to be brought back to, to reality uh, yesterday. So I just have a, a quick look over a couple of the stories from overnight. I mean, obviously, you know, I was looking through through Twitter just through through the day yesterday. Um, I know I'm sounding a bit like Anthony there, checking Twitter throughout the day on a on a day off, if you like. But it was, you know, negative story after a while. People watching the sell off, and um, you know, there was other things that sort of influenced that rather than you know perhaps this sort of technical breaks and, and stuff that we've seen. You've got Apple planning to use its own chips. Uh, in Max from 2020 replacing Intel and of course uh, you can see if we go back to that uh, heat map from the S&P Intel down there about 6% so a massive sort of down day there on that negative uh, news for them so that had a, an impact as well um, again losing support S&P dips below 200 day moving average as tech uh, trade term will linger so important to see that first sort of daily close below <coughs> from a technical point of view as mentioned where we finish the week is going to be pretty important um, to, to sort of whether it is that long term sort of buying opportunity that people have been waiting for uh, maybe they want to see sort of a confirmation uh, of that move uh, higher Going back to, to yesterday as well, what we saw, and it took a while for this sort of move to really materialise. We've got oil chart here, and it was reported um, that Russia's output had increased month on month from March to February. Uh, one of the reasons, perhaps, we're sort of seeing, or we saw, sorry, uh, a sell-off yesterday. And quite, a, let me just refresh this chart just to clean it up a bit. But you can see yesterday we really, I mean, again sort of coming into the afternoon one o'clock obviously got that sort of increase in volume around two o'clock but the sell-off was, was pretty big for, for oil there on on that sort of headline which did take a while to sort of come to the market but with you know Europe away understandably seeing that break through and, and we're now back to, to levels uh, if I just yeah, I mean 63 I mean not long ago you know the 20th of, uh, of March but still you know pretty big down day there for, for oil and I guess you've got here, a you know, decent sort of level support that we, we did break through. So again, one to, to keep an eye on um, there as well for the oil market. But we'll come um, we'll come and have a look at the charts in a bit more detail later on. The VIX, oh, let me just turn that down, rising too fast, up 114% this year, 36% it's too, uh, above its 2018 average. You know, here you've got just where my mouse is, that's obviously the beginning of that sort of sell-off that we saw early February, so we're not quite, well, we're, not, we're nowhere near that level at the moment. So again, something just to bear in mind, coming to the weekend, where the market is, what's the VIX doing? Um, you know, going back to this sort of, and I'll put it back on the, the S&P here, uh, sort of that buy the dip uh, sort of mentality that people may have been, you know, used to. And you can see it even worked really at the beginning of February, anyone that sort of, wanted to get involved there would have you know seen profits up quite nicely I know we're back down to levels not seen since then now um, so I mean the, the cons for, for buying the dip I guess you've got the the retreating of, of sort of central bank stimulus across across uh, the board really so you know that would have sort of a negative impact on, on equity markets rising high you've got the rising trade tension at the moment someone else will sort of come on to later on um, has global uh, growth peaked you know we've got some some jobs numbers coming out um, on Friday in, in the US and, and wage numbers as well which will be interesting and obviously you've got the the tech sector under a lot of uh, a lot of pressure I think the the, the fang stocks were down we got it written down here somewhere quite down quite a lot uh, yesterday three to four percent another down day and uh, so you can just see again we have another test of this 200 day moving average um, but could still be a longer term investment opportunity. In the last two times we briefly really uh, went below the 200 day moving average. You can see we, we rise, rose higher quite again. Uh, and it ha really has been a, you know, a bull run for quite some time. Yes, we're 10% off the highs, but you know, if you had said at the beginning of 2018, you know, if we have a 10% correction, what an opportunity that would be to buy. So it could be definitely uh, an inch, well, it will be an interesting week to see where we close from a technical point of view, stories that come out, is Trump going to keep battering 
Uh, Amazon with, with all his tweets, it's definitely having a, a negative impact there. You had obviously Tesla had some negative news yesterday after being investigated into to the fatal crash. You know, this is all sort of weighing uh, on the tech sector as well. Yesterday, obviously with XP's coming down, we had, let's just have a quick look over at, at gold, which you'd expect finally to, let me just put the pivots on here to just give it a bit more clarity to actually move higher and we did T notes number safe haven pushing pushing on as well in terms of the dollar uh, it was mildly lower mainly because of uh, of the dollar yen really the other other sort of pairs not affected too much but you can see here the yen is uh, increasing in value there uh, in that sort of risk off um, that we saw uh, come to the table there and, and since then we're sort of you know going sort of sideways, have a quick look over the euro dollar there. As mentioned yesterday, not too much going on and we're, and we're back to really levels that we saw at the back end of last week. Cable as well yesterday, not doing too much. For, for the market as we speak now, the dollar is actually relatively near the lows of the day. So one to, to bear in mind, as mentioned, we'll, we'll come and over and look at the sort of the technicals in a, in a bit more more detail but the dollar yesterday just lower a bit basically because of the of the dollar yen oil was mentioned down on that sort of uh, you know, Russia report in March output uh, a bit higher and up from February there's talk of uh, a NAFTA deal coming April 13th 14th so that would be something just to bear in mind you know the, there's a lot of talk is about the economy in the US being really strong but a bit of hope uh, on that deal going through could, uh, could be what this, this market really needs over the next couple of weeks to see an increase over, uh, over in the States for, for those stocks. And of course it is weighing uh, on, uh, on European and Asian equity markets as well. The FTSE, while it had a fantastic week last week, one of the, the highest weeks it's seen for, for quite some time, you know, we're still down at these levels that we were, you know, if we were to draw a line here, that we were on on the, the lowest point of that, that sort of correction on the 6th of Feb, the DAX as well, which has had a, a really poor year. Yes, we had a, a good week last week, but uh, still down quite quite heavily there. And as mentioned, yeah, the S&P, that's the lowest close that we had of 2018. So both those days at the beginning of February, um, 6th, 5th, 9th, uh, we all ended up closing a bit higher. So interesting one there from a, from a technical point of view. Um, Calendar-wise, today, you know, we've got a bit of bit of data coming out at nine o'clock, so I'll just be wary of that. Try to wrap up before that. You've got the the, the market manufacturing final reading from from uh, from Europe there. A bit of market manufacturing from UK as well. Oil, even though we had the the bank holiday in the UK, is going to be its usual time. So nine thirty this evening for the API DOE tomorrow as well. Uh, going into to the week as well, you would have received in the research the sort of the the headlines. Uh, sort of releases that are coming out Wednesday. You've got to be aware of the ADP as well. Obviously, we just mentioned the DOE by head of non-farm payrolls on Friday. And throughout the week, we'll be talking about it. I don't think it's in terms of the the jobs number 313 last month. It's not really what it was uh, in terms of importance anymore. A lot more focus is going to be on those wage numbers. Um, but uh, the expected at the moment 195. So something just to bear in mind. ADP as it comes out, can it give a, an indication that we're going to get a beat or, or miss and, and sort of go from there. Uh, so of course throughout the week we'll be running through uh, non-farm payrolls, the different releases as to, to what could happen uh, as well going forward. But in terms of today, a couple of releases early morning before uh, we go into the afternoon and, and some lower tier stuff. API obviously something to, to be aware of. So just having a look now, we'll have a quick run through the, the currency pairs put the, the pivots on in terms of where we could go today so euro I mean if you just get rid of this moving average you can see we're sort of stuck now within this this range that we've, we've sort of come into you've got the lows which are pretty much in line the highs as well so something to, to bear in mind I see Alex in the room taking a really nice trade on the break of the pivot the classic there riding that up to to what was the, the previous high 124 the R1 yesterday's uh, well, I say yes, yeah, yesterday's high, really nice trade, and now you know it's it's, it's coming to the, the the top end of that range. If we look here on a bit of a, a longer time frame, you can see it's it's in an even bigger range. Those highs up there to the lows down there. So one to to bear in mind going forward that even the, these smaller ranges, it might be worth to sort of waiting for a confirmed break either way um, for a real direction.
Have a look over uh, at Pound and of course Brexit talks going forward are going to be the main sort of mover for this market. Something to, to keep an eye on for uh, you know, each day and, and week as we, as we go through. I'm sure uh, Safe will be delighted to see all the negative press about his, his buddy Jeremy Corbyn but you know, that's for another day to talk about. Again though for cable you can see in this sort of range those highs something to bear in mind we had a, a push higher this morning as the dollar sort of weakened there. R1 offering a bit of support now I mean it's, it's, it's really this is the key range to, to bear in mind and you could even you know if you want to just be a bit safer you know look at around about here I think let me just remove that so I mean technically it looks like it, it could be quite good the short from from higher up using the, the previous sort of resistance points that we had on the 28th I would definitely be looking to, to have a bit of a trend going on from those highs to see if we can have a, you know, a bit of a breakthrough this morning so one to keep an eye on can we you know, make our way back down to pivot I'd expect a bit of support there using the trend as well from the previous days yeah decent sort of breakthrough and it may well be that later on we, we have some support there going forward have a quick look over dollar uh, Aussie dollar as well which is really push higher quite nicely again let me just refresh this chart and you can see pretty much I mean to not definitely to the tick but again the the dollar pairs is coming to the top end of this this sort of range that they've been in after failing to push lower yesterday so going forward definitely one to keep an eye on in terms of that range for the dollar pairs is the dollar going to weaken I know we've got a bit of European and, and UK data coming out in, in 7 and 37 minutes um, but it may well be just you know wait and see to see if we can get a, a push higher or look to play that range if the way you want to go. As mentioned, so European equities, so DAX here and Euro stocks both gapping lower. So an opportunity has always got to be to to think about can we get a push higher to sort of fill that gap. In terms of of key areas to be uh, aware of, let me just mark that up. You can see why we found a bit of resistance there and. Definitely for the DAX, all these pullbacks that we had here on Friday, definitely points I would always have on the chart, their profit targets or, or whatnot, if we can push above. You know, to the downside, if we were to see perhaps a continuation of, of this sell off that we, we had over in the US sort of leak through into, into the European markets, you can see uh, all the areas of support that I would want to have on the chart going forward as well. FTSE, similar sort of thing. If we can push higher, and you can see there, let me put that back on a 60 minute. If we can push higher, you've got the, the previous lows from Thursday uh, to, to have on your charts just in case uh, we do get a, sort of a quick move. You want to know definitely where those, uh, those profit targets could be. Equity markets, as we mentioned at the beginning, just coming up to those previous lows. Quite a good area of support that we had really from last week and, and even before that. So. In terms of, of, of sentiment, you know, if we do get a you know clean break above that, you know, not only is it for the S and P going to really be above the 200-day moving average, but if we're starting to eat into to the move lower that we had, and and from a sentiment point of view, that's kind of like okay, well, look, last two, two, three times we were below the 200-day moving average. Next day, see you later. You know, we're we're above it now. So, key level for equities, and it may well be that we go sideways until the cash open comes, and then we get a. You know, a continuation either way, but sentiment. If I was looking to buy these markets, it would really only be if we can break above the pivot, really for the S and P, for the Dow Jones, pretty similar. How does the pivot line up? Okay, I want to see a break just above that, really the low here that you see, the 28th. The Nasdaq, I mean, the tech sector is obviously getting a hit, but even so, from a technical point of view, if we can break above that pivot, so a bit more similar to S and P there, then you know, sentiment will start to change. I mean, you can see yesterday, obviously, levels to really be aware of where the sell-off took over come, you know, the, the cash open yesterday. We've got to have marked up a, as an area of resistance if we were to get up there, and it's going to be an attractive place to, to look to sell. But I would probably say, unless we get a, a momentum push to the upside above those pivots, best to sort of wait until the afternoon cash open, what we can get going forward. As mentioned, non-farm payrolls on Friday is going to be interesting. It, it, it probably, you know, if we're being honest, started the sell-off that we saw at the beginning of February following the uh, the higher wage numbers. If we see that again, you know, it could well be that uh, we we then really do get the close below that 200-day moving average, which you know people are talking about. It's only important because 
you know people are you know talking about it it's in the mar it's in the in all the headlines if we just go back to well I'll put this on a, a sort of a weekly chart maybe even quarterly here for the s p since uh, the 2000 march 2009 low which you can see around here just circled up since then to the, to the highs or pretty much where we are now we're up 372 percent crazy i mean i mean just look at that quarterly it's just up 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 i mean a bit of you know slowing down i mean there's a couple of times we have been you know consistently below that 200 day moving average but 372 percent up since then you know, it could be time obviously just for a bit of uh chilling out but as mentioned is is it an opportunity to buy the dip you know like i said if you were if you were told people early on in the year if we can come back down to to 2500 in the s p you know they'd have, they'd have bit your hand off for an opportunity to to get back uh, long in this market so one just to, to bear in mind uh, there going forward we'll have a, a quick look uh, through the charts obviously as we, we go through the day as well but any questions please please do to get them in the chat um, and we can have a little run through there as well I mean just going forward I'd, I'd just say equities those pivots you want to be aware of dollar pairs we're now at the top of those ranges oil are we going to get a continuation from in from uh, those sort of negative headlines. Yes, you've got the API and DOE to come, but uh, one to, to keep an eye on there. Um, but I hope you all had a, a great Easter. I hope you all have a, a good trading week. Uh, obviously, a, a shorter week here over in UK, just just four days of it. You've also, you know, just before we wrap up, you've also got the, the quarterly earnings coming up soon, you know, and thanks to the sort of the, the tax reform and, and solid global growth that we have seen the tech sector is expected to be quite good now i'd be interested to see whether we sort of ride that momentum or we actually look past it all and then the market doesn't really see a rise on that so this week next week is going to be definitely important really for the remainder of this year i think in terms of you know if you would ask, if you were to ask me do i think this is an opportunity to buy the s p i'd say ask me at the end of the week i think if we do get a close above the 200 day moving average i think it will be from a technical point of view of course anything can happen you know in one month two months time that that uh, makes me change my mind but if we think if we close above there this week I, for me it's uh, it's an opportunity to to get long this market uh, again but yeah as mentioned any questions please do get them in the chat and if not hope you have uh, a great day